Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're talking about creating a cyclorama inside of Cinema 4D, which can be used for obviously product photography, etc., etc., just like you would in the real world. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to create a new document by pressing Command N on my keyboard. After doing so, we're going to need to create two spline objects. I'm going to go up here to my spline objects and select a rectangle. I'm going to duplicate this rectangle by pressing Control on my keyboard, clicking and dragging this rectangle down. The first one I'll name small, the second one I'll name big. After making the changes to the name, let's make changes to their sizes. So on the small one, I'm going to go over here to the object properties and set it to 10 by 10 centimeters. Next on the big one, I'll change it to 2000 by 2000. After doing so, you'll notice that uh, we cannot see the whole um, rectangle that we just created. We can press H on our keyboard to reframe to the particular object we have selected, or frame all objects. Next thing we want to do is we want to make this editable, but before we do so, we need to round the corners of this spline. So with the big rectangle selected, I'll come down here into the properties, click on rounding, and I'll change the radius to 300. You'll notice this is what's going to create the curvature of our cyclorama, right? Next, we need to go over here and make it editable. When we make it editable, we can change the points, sides, and polygons of a particular object. In this case, it's a spline. I'm going to go over here and select my selection tool. Um, I'm going to use the rectangular selection. So if you're in live selection, you can come over here, click, hold down, and move to rectangular selection. I'm going to draw a selection. Well, I was going to draw a selection over these three dots. I'll press delete on my keyboard. When I do so, you'll notice that this spline is still connected. We want to come and go ahead and click on big in our object manager and uncheck close spline. Next, we're going to go ahead and select this one point, press delete on our keyboard, and we'll see we have the basis of the cyclorama. Next, we need to, we need to add a NURB object. We'll come up here, click and hold, and go down to sweep NURBs. Basically, what Sweep NURBS does is it uses two or three splines to um, contour an object based on two or three splines, right? The first spline, which is going to be the small one, as we drag in, we're saying use this first spline or object to deform the second object, which is going to be the big spline. When I go ahead and drop this in right here, we'll see that this is the proper ordering. If we switch the ordering, it will change what uh, this looks like. So make sure the small one is first. Next thing, we're going to adjust the properties of the small one. When we increase the height, you'll notice that we start widening out our cyclorama. Let's put this to 3000. This width uh, property right here is how wide the cyclorama is. I'll press 3 on my keyboard and left click with my mouse to orbit around. If I change the width property, it will change right there. So if I change this to one, we'll notice our cyclorama is only one unit in width, or one centimeter, because centimeter is the current units that we're using, right? So whether this is set to one or 10, it really doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and orbit around, and I'll press H on my keyboard to reframe. Next, we can add a material to the sweep nerves. So we can come down here to the material uh, objects or material editor. We can click on Create, New Material, or we could just double click in here to create a new material. Once we have that new material, we'll go ahead and double click on it. We'll uncheck Specular, and we'll come up here to the Color tab, and we'll change the color to pure white. We'll click on OK, we'll close the Material Editor, and we'll click and drag to drag this material over to the Sweep NURBS. When we do that, we now have a white cyclorama. If you wanted a different color cyclorama, you could go ahead and change the color of your material here. If I press Command R, I can go ahead and render my scene, and we'll see we have the basis of our white cyclorama. Next, I'm going to go ahead and press A on my keyboard to redraw my viewport. I'm going to press 3 and left mouse click to uh, orbit around. Press 2 and left mouse click to uh, dolly in. Press 1 and mouse click and to rechange my orientation. Obviously, you can, instead of pressing 1 in your left mouse button, you can come up here and click within your viewport. So clicking 1 is the same as clicking here. Clicking 2 is the same as clicking here. Clicking 3 is the same as clicking here. Next, I'll add a light to my scene by clicking on the light object here. I'll change its position 
I'll enable it to cast shadows by selecting the light, come up here to basic, and actually, I believe it's general, and change shadow to shadow map soft. We can change how harsh these shadows by clicking on the shadow tab here. Let's change it to 60%. I'll add a cube to my scene by clicking on this cube object here. I'll drag it down a little bit, press Command R, and you'll notice that you can obviously have any type of product you want in here, right? Real quick, let's add a little bit of interest to our scene. I know this is beyond the quick tip of the tutorial, but I'm gonna right click on the Sweep NURBS object. I'm gonna go to Simulation Tabs, and I'm gonna select Rigid Body. Next, after doing that, I'm gonna go over here to the cube. I'm gonna right click and go to Simulation Tags and select Collider Body. On the collider body, we want to make sure that the dynamics are set to on. And let's see, I think on the rigid body, we need to set our shape from automatic to static mesh. You may not see this here in the tutorial, but here, changing the shape from automatic, there is an option, the third one from the bottom, called static mesh. Now if we drag this cube up, we press play in our timeline, we'll notice that it drops and it lands in place. I'll press Command R on my keyboard. We'll see the soft shadows we have here. Obviously, we can change the color of the cyclorama, again, by double-clicking on this material tag here. We can change the shadows by clicking on the light itself, coming in the shadow, and then changing, um, uh, I'm sorry, scroll up, and changing the density of the shadow. We can even cast colored shadows, etc. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, guys, I'm out.